All right, I believe we are live. Aloha everyone, I'm meteorologist Malika Dudley from Maui Now and Big Island Now News, and we are here with John Bravender. He is the Warning Coordination Meteorologist. Yep. All right, you guys are very busy. It's August, so you were probably expecting this. Um, why don't we start with what should people know, but we'll start with Eric first, since that's the one that is closer. Sure, Eric. Um, the, the the first uh, tropical cyclone we've had of the season. You, you mentioned this being August, August or, or peak, so it's kind of what we're we're expecting activity wise. Uh, Eric, right now it's still a hurricane. Um, it's been showing some weakening. It, at one point, it was a Category Four hurricane, well southeast of the state. Uh, it's been going through a steady weakening over the past day or two. Uh, right now, a uh, Category 1 hurricane. That weakening trend is expected to continue. So as it passes south of the state, uh, weakening to a tropical storm, and then once to the southwest, down to a tropical depression, and eventually remnant low. The track and intensity forecasts have been pretty right on this whole time, um, which has been great to see you know i know technology just gets better every year right um so what is your your impression of how the forecasting for this has gone oh, that's true um the the intensity especially when it went through the rapid intensification uh, earlier this week that was uh, a very very fast and um, um jumped up uh, stronger than we were expecting. But the, the, the weakening trend, as it encounters the stronger wind shear, um, that's uh, on, on, on schedule, which we, we like to see as well. Mm -hmm. And the consistent motion that it's been taking, mm -hmm. moving to wet, west or west-northwest, yep. um, and then passing south of the islands, the, the confidence in that track forecast is, is what allowed us to say, um, feel confident that we had a tropical storm warning for our southern coastal waters, hurricane warning for offshore waters, but not over land. So we never put Hawaii County into, say, a tropical storm watch. Um, even though there are impacts that are, are expected to be felt, including heavy rain and, and, and surf that they're seeing now. Right. Yeah. So let's go through those. We've got a high surf warning, um, 15 to 20 foot phase is expected for the mm -hmm. east side of the Big Island possible shadowing from Big Island, so the other islands, not yet under a high surf advisory. Are we expecting that? Uh, not right now. Uh, we're, we're, we're keeping the, the surf uh, forecast just below advisory levels, but it, it's, it's borderline right there. So uh, if it's going to, one way or another, uh, having uh, an advisory for east-facing shores, uh, would it be un unusual or unexpected? We're, we're not anticipating it right now, but it's a, a possibility. Right. Let's go to winds. So we're looking at tropical storm force winds, which extend, I think, about 105 miles from the center, if I remember correctly. Um, so if the center of the system is passing, let's say, 200 miles to the south, we're not in that window, which is great. Um, but we're looking at a wind advisory. So 25 to 35 mile per hour winds gusting to 45. Where can we see localized um, gustier winds? Uh, that's right. Um, just, as you mentioned, we're, we're outside the, the main wind radius with the, with the tropical storm force winds. But between the between Eric and the high pressure off to our northeast, really tight gradient, leading to those stronger winds. Uh, so Maui County and Hawaii County is under uh, wind advisory, as you mentioned. Um, almost like an enhanced trade wind type uh, pattern. So the, the typically windier areas that we see during trade winds, um, the South Point area on the Big Island, uh, over and downwind of the Kahala Range on the Big Island, through the, the central plains on Maui, mm -hmm. um, into, into Lanai, um, through, through the, the channels there. Um, th those areas are, are the ones that will be most impacted by the strongest winds. And also wind advisories for Maui County and Hawaii counties, uh, but also uh, Oahu and Kauai could see gusty winds, just not quite as strong as in the east. You know, we've got um, the, the TMT issue over on the Big Island. A lot of people are camped out at Pu'u Hulu Hulu. Um, what can you tell me for, for them as far as winds and rain goes? A lot of people have been asking me. Sure. Yeah, through the through the saddle area in the Big Island, uh, have, winds so far haven't been quite as strong as they are in those normally funneled areas. Mm -hmm. But as Eric passes by and the wind starts to turn um, more easterly or southeasterly, could, could get some more funneling through the saddle and get the stronger winds um, tonight, um, increasing through the day today. I think they're 
a couple uh, wind gauges that we have through the area are running near 20 miles an hour or so, uh, maybe picking up, up a bit more uh, this evening and uh, during the overnight hours. Mm-hmm. And what about rainfall? Uh, rainfall, true, uh, as well. Um, normally mainly focused along the east and southeast sections where the, where the winds are blowing inshore, but because this is a very moist uh, tropical air mass, there, there's no inversion, there's nothing to stop the, the shower, the height of the showers. So those will be building up through the, the summit as well. And we could be seeing some some rainfall through the, the saddle area uh, as well to impact the, the, the folks that are outside. Okay, yeah, you know, uh, it's not every day that we have that many people outdoors with tents with, you know, so we wanna make sure that um, all of our residents are safe. For those rest of our residents throughout the islands, um, we're looking at the east sides mainly being impacted majority of rainfall for the eastern end of the state. Can you kind of take me through the islands of what you expect and the timing for the rainfall? Sure. No, sure. Um, yeah, starting off um, uh, with, with Eric passing closest, it uh, looks like uh, um, Hawaii Island will, will bear the, uh, the brunt of the impacts. Um, you mentioned the surf there. Uh, we're seeing high surf now. Um, blocking some of the 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 rest of the state rainfall wise moisture first increasing there today showers picking up um continuing into into friday Mm -hmm. um greatest rainfall amounts um uh, looking at widespread amounts uh, several inches of rain um isolated amounts up to up to eight inches possible in some some areas Mm -hmm. um going further away a uh, couple inches possible for Maui Island. Um, they're they're the next more exposed, like East Maui, uh, Hana area. Uh, more tonight into into Friday, and uh, across the rest of the state, uh, not as heavy rain expected. Uh, we still could have some heavy showers. Focus mainly windward sections, uh, with with those uh, trade winds focusing things on where where it normally rains. Um, inch or so rainfall. And that's uh, more Friday into Friday nights for the for the western part of the state. Awesome. And when you look at the system, you kind of see those those clouds peeling off of it. Um, what does that look like from land when we look up? <laughs> <laughs> right, right now the the, the clouds from Eric that we see passing starting to pass across the state are the the high level clouds, the cirrus starting to come in first. So you'll be able to see that off in the horizon, actually passing overhead, starting to, to cover the, the big island as well mm-hmm. right now. Um, those coming in, moving faster than you'd see with the low clouds, uh, somewhat thin, sun being visible through them. And then as it gets closer, when you start to get some of the moisture and heavier showers come in, then they'll start to thicken and become more opaque and, and bring more rainfall with them. All right. I think we've got Eric down. That sounds like a really good forecast for everyone. They can make some decisions. Um, Obviously, we're in the middle of hurricane season, so it's always good to have an emergency kit. We could see, you know, with high winds, you never know when uh, power outages could occur or if lightning strike somewhere that could cause some issues and so there are some things we saw with the fires here that with um, cell towers being out, you know, that we couldn't communicate. So there are these, you know, we're not expecting a direct hit. We're not expecting the tropical storm force winds that can cause, you know, some real damage. Um, But there are still things that we need to prepare for. Yep, no, that's that's a a great summary. Even with the, it's essentially being out with the strong winds that we have now, being outside of the, the main circulation from, from Eric, um, could have uh, sporadic power outages, could have sporadic damage um, with, with, with the winds that we're seeing right now. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move to Flossie. So what's interesting is we've got one on that south track and now we've one on a northerly track. And <laughs> the going out four or five days, the error in the track can be up to 200 miles and 20 miles per hour with the intensity. So it's still very fluid, still very uncertain. We have to watch this as every single update comes up so that we can prepare appropriately. Um, So let's first start with what's the difference between a system going to the south and a system going to the north and uh, just the general impacts that are possible? Sure. Um, One one of the the big things, uh, well, anytime um, within a, a hurricane or a tropical cyclone, the, the most damaging areas and the biggest impact are what we call the right front quadrant 
as it's moving along a line, that uh, front right area is where, as it's rotating, um, the tropical cyclones in the northern hemisphere will spin anti uh, counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. um, and the winds would be added to the storm motion as well to get more damage uh, from the winds from in that part of the, of the cyclone and also any waves building up with that as well. Um, so there's a lot going on in that section. And had with, with Eric's track south of us, if that had been a little farther north, a couple hundred miles north, then that would bring that into the state and have more damage impacts from that. Um, if, if Flossie were to pass north of us, and put us on the far side, then there, there's um, not as many uh, impacts. The, the wind is a little bit less on that on that south side, and uh, um, surf uh, not quite as as much as well. So it, it's not to, to downplay the threat at all, yeah. but um, tracking north, you know, having a track like that northeast of us would be more uh, would, would be. If you had to choose one, <laughs> you'd choose exactly. North. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to use the word safer because yeah. that implies yeah, too much. Yeah, that. it is the, the, the better option. Well, especially this far out when we don't really know. I mean, if it does pass through the state, obviously the impacts are much different than if it skirts us to the north. So what mm -hmm. are what is your take on it now with it being about, let's see, Sunday night is the earliest possible reasonable arrivals. So what is it? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So three to four days out. Yeah. Uh, you, you had mentioned uh, the, the average error that we have 200 miles and uh, 20, 20 miles an hour for intensity. That's the, the, that's normal. That's everything average together. Um, as we get that far out with this forecast, that the uncertainty on those last, the, the three, four, five day forecast points, are, are higher than normal. So there's there's more uncertainty with that as well. So we're, we're pretty confident with the track over the next two to three days is uh, moving consistently, um, uh, similar direction, similar speed. But as it gets near the islands and weakens further, there's some differences that uh, uh, emerge from the different uh, computer models that we have. Some take it north, some take it over us. So there's a bigger spread, more, or I should say less confidence in, in where it would go. Um, beyond what the, the normal error is for something like this. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the message that we're, we're, we're trying to tell people that whether it goes north of us or, or south of us, you should prepare as if it were to be impactful to the state. Right. It's always best to be prepared. Don't be scared. Be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> My motto. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, John, for your time. I know you're super busy. Um, I'm hoping to see you tomorrow and be there with you guys so I can give all of you, um, our Maui Now and Big Island Now users, an update from the headquarters. Maybe I can even do a little um, tour <laughs> of what you guys do. But thank you so much. We really appreciate it. All of you that are listening, go to our websites, Maui Now and BigIslandNow.com for your respective areas. And you can find all the information that you need as these systems move through, if there are any power outages, traffic, um, you know, issues or whatever it is, closures, cancellations, you can find all of that information there. Thank you so much, John. See you soon. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>